Recently, we made a video bringing you some mind-blowing facts about time. And we learned something. We learned that we simply didn't have the time to bring you all the mind-blowing facts about time. So, prepare to have your mind blown all over again as we take you on another journey through the historical and hysterical details of time and its workings. And if you missed the first part, don't worry, I'll be pointing you in that direction later. For now, prepare to experience the truly incredible. I'm Mike with List25, and here are 25 facts about time that'll blow your mind. Again. 25. Chronesthesia. It's not yet possible to physically travel in time. However, that doesn't stop us from doing it in other ways. I'm talking about mental time travel here. Chronesthesia is an idea developed by Endel Tolving, a game-changing psychologist who first mentioned it in the 1980s. Tolving saw remembering the past and looking forward to the future as a time travel journey within the brain. As you learn from what's gone before and use that information to live in the oncoming future, you are in effect a time traveler. Let's say I buy a burrito from a local takeout. The burrito is bad and it puts me in the bathroom all night. I'll never go to that place again. Applying the laws of chronesthesia, that kind of makes me like the doctor, right? 24, head to foot. I I've talked a lot in our videos about how time can be experienced differently in different situations. For example, if you move really fast, then time slows down. But you don't need to move in order to shuffle time around. It can all happen within the confines of your own body. In other words, your head is faster than your feet. How do we figure that? The bite-sized version is that due to the effects of gravity and time needing to adjust at different heights, your nose ages quicker than your toes. 23. Strontium Atomic Clock Many people of an older generation will have had that moment where their clock goes out of sync, and they have to twiddle on the knob to make it right again. One timepiece that really wouldn't need that is the Strontium Atomic Clock. By the way, Strontium is a chemical and nuclear byproduct. Uh, following on from what I said about time needing to adjust at different heights, this clock checks out how elevated things are, using the strontium atoms inside. That way, it tells the time with pinpoint accuracy. And when I say accuracy, I am not jerking around. This clock calculates time so well, it'll be a reported 15 billion years before anyone has to twiddle those knobs. 22. A day on Mercury. Let's go to Mercury! Or, or rather, let's not. We would not survive there. What we can do, though, is mention how time works over on this planet of extreme temperatures. The sun rises and sets on Mercury, just like other worlds. Where it differs is the number of times it happens. In fact, you could almost mistake the sun for a yo-yo when looking at it from the surface. This up and down movement occurs when Mercury is closest to the sun and rotating as part of its orbit. The solar day here lasts the equivalent of 176 of our days. That's because it rotates slower than us. 21. Language of time. Amazing as it may seem, language can impact how we perceive the movement of time. This is because different cultures interpret the flow of time in distinct ways. For some, it moves back and forth. For others, up and down, and so forth. And we articulate and understand a lot of things through language, so if you think about it, why wouldn't language affect our perceptions here? 20. Consciousness and Time You can argue that time is a human concept, but if you take that away, what do you have? You wouldn't be able to plan your life for starters, yet does it go even deeper than that? Philosophy professor Holly Anderson does research on how time and consciousness are connected. She has suggested that consciousness itself disappears without time to guide it. For example, think of your memories as a stack of building blocks. How are you going to construct your identity without experience? And you gain experience by moving forwards through time, creating these all-important memories. Without the measuring system of time, you could potentially lose all perspective, and through that, your sense of self. 19. The Arrival of GMT how far back do you think GMT, or Greenwich Mean Time, goes? This famous standard by which time was told around the world was influential, but it only lasted less than a hundred years as a universal system, between 1884 and 1972. 
Before the introduction of UTC, or Coordinated Universal Time, GMT ruled the waves. The actual invention of GMT happened in the 1670s thanks to the work of astronomer John Flamsteed. Without him, we wouldn't be telling the time with clocks, i.e. mean time, and we'd be using the sun as one big flaming hot timepiece, i.e. solar time. Why is it called Greenwich Mean Time in the first place? Well, because it was devised in Greenwich, of course. Flamsteed observed the passing of the sun over the line of longitude at the Royal Greenwich Observatory, and the rest is history. 18. Horology Have you heard of horology? Or is the first time you're hearing about it the title of this number? Well, the word itself is believed to date back to the 16th century, and it encapsulates both time measurement and time pieces. If you want to know about time, well, visit a horologist. Not only can they tell you all about the subject, but some can even make you a nice clock or throw a watch into the bargain. 17. Hawaiian and Alaskan Time You'd think being thousands of miles apart with wildly different climates would make Hawaii and Alaska pretty different when it comes to time. In fact, they occupy largely the same time zone. This is the HATS, or Hawaiian Aleutian Zone, which comes under Coordinated Universal Time, or UTC, like I said before. This zone is classified as UTC 10, meaning you add 10 hours to the end, ensuring everything runs smoothly. It's amazing the amount of put and take required for calculating time around the world. Bonus fact, the HATS time zone doesn't use daylight savings time, so no need to fiddle with your clocks, folks. More time to surf those waves or ski those mountains. 16. What time is it on the ISS? The ISS, or International Space Station, travels over our heads at a reported distance of 400 kilometers. It takes a surprisingly speedy 90 minutes to go all the way around the globe. This begs the question, what time is it up there right now? Appropriately enough, the station relies on Coordinated Universal Time, UTC again, specifically Central European Time minus one hour. The joint project includes both the US and Russia, not the easiest of alliances, perhaps, but it unifies them through this time zone. UTC ensures that all countries get their turn with the big floating space station. 15. DST A little earlier I mentioned Daylight Savings Time, otherwise known as DST. It's a vital part of timekeeping today, but who came up with it? The concept was reportedly mentioned by U.S. founding father Benjamin Franklin in 1784. It was then popularized thanks to New Zealand entomologist George Hudson a little over a century later. DST wasn't just a box-ticking excuse for experts. It was a necessity. Over in the UK, William Willett lobbied for it to be adopted in 1907. Like Franklin, he put his words in print. Franklin wrote an essay, whereas Willett issued a pamphlet. By 1914, the planet had entered the First World War. Precious resources like coal needed to be conserved, so DST was implemented. Daylight savings meant people burn less coal for their lighting, saving fuel supplies. Because why bother when it was bright outside anyway? I'm still not the biggest fan of it because Disney at night is one of the greatest things ever, and daylight savings time means less Disney at night, and I get sad. Especially Pandora the Animal Kingdom. If you haven't seen Pandora, at Animal Kingdom at night. To pause this, go now. Just book a flight or wherever you are. Just go. It's amazing. And daylight savings time means I get less of that, and that is sad. Let me know in the comments below. Do you prefer daylight savings time or standard time? Do you like it getting dark earlier and lighter in the morning, or do you prefer dark in the morning and lighter at night? Let me know. 14. Timekeeping on a global scale. I've talked a lot so far about different time zones and stuff like GMT and UTC time. Keeping all this time in check around the world is surely a logistical nightmare. Who is ultimately responsible for it? Step forward the International Bureau of Weights and Measures and the International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service. Their extensive records are an invaluable guide to ensuring we're in sync, from Algeria to Zimbabwe. 13. Sumerian Time when and how was time first measured? We believe it happened over 5,000 years ago, care of the ancient Sumerians. They apparently judged the passage of time using shadows. The shadow clock cleverly employs light and shadow for timekeeping. You're probably familiar with the sundial. 
as used in ancient Egypt and other places. Well, it's essentially the same deal. As well as introducing our standard of 60 seconds and 60 minutes, the Sumerians also came up with the idea of a seven day week. However, their day was somewhat different than ours. For example, they divided their day into 12, with each section lasting approximately two hours, depending on the time of the year. 12, the oddball effect. None of us are getting any younger. When you were a kid, a year probably went on forever. Now, it's a case of blink and you'll miss it. This sense of time moving faster as you age isn't unusual. In fact, it's been categorized as part of something called the oddball effect. The sad truth is, you enjoy things more when you're a kid. So by this measure, time is slower. Once you're trapped in that nine to five job, however, time gets squashed like an accordion. Now you oddballs need not feel so odd anymore. 11, Caesar's orders. Even if you know next to nothing about the Roman empire, you'll have probably heard the name Julius Caesar. He didn't just party with Cleopatra and get murdered by his trusty friends. This iconic ruler gave rise to the mighty empire in the first place. It also standardized its time system. In the previous days of the Republic, things had slipped to the point where time didn't match up with the seasons. Under Caesar, the year would last 445 days, and the move led to the introduction of leap years. 10. Solar and Sidereal Days I wouldn't want to be the expert helping a Roman emperor work out a yearly calendar. Time is a complex business, as I'm sure you've worked out from our list so far. A day on Earth may seem fairly straightforward. I mean, 24 hours, right? Well, not exactly. What you're thinking of is the solar day. This concerns the time taken for our planet to turn once on its axis in relation to the sun. A sidereal day, on the other hand, is different. Sidereal is derived from sidereus, the Latin for star. We judge that by fixed stars after we rotate. A sidereal day lasts approximately four minutes less than a solar one. Nine, time may affect your heart. Incredibly, the power of time appears to have an impact on your heart. And I don't mean that your heart can develop problems with age. I mean the system you use to measure time can theoretically have an impact on your major organ. It's believed that the risk of a heart attack goes up by an astonishing 24% when you factor in daylight savings time. A University of Michigan study from 2014 made the connection. So what's going on here? Apparently losing an hour of precious sleep through daylight savings time can contribute to the state of poor health. There are other factors as well, so don't start raging at your clocks just yet. Whatever your state of being, we can all agree that the Monday morning after the clocks go forward is a killer in any sense. Eight, the time salesman. Nowadays, if we wanna know the time, we just pick up a phone or look at the watch on our wrist and I don't wearing one, but bingo, there it is. Just not in my case. Back in 1836, it was a different story. Just because you were well off enough to afford a timepiece didn't mean that finding the precise time wasn't a challenge. Even in that era, there were still people using sundials to set their clocks and watches. The Belleville family plugged that gap by bringing up to the minute calculations to your doorstep. John, the father, was an astronomer at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, the place where Greenwich Mean Time was born, I mentioned it earlier. The words, my time has come, took on a whole new meaning. Seven, clocks aren't as accurate as you think. Try as we might, we will never get time exactly right all the, well, time. Armies of people calculate the passage of time as accurately as possible. Not to mention getting it to flow smoothly across the world from country to country. Despite this colossal effort, the idea of time is always ahead of us, speeding into the future while we try to keep up. You have to add minutes here, take seconds away there. Something to think about next time you're looking at your computer or other device. They're all locked into coordinated universal time and adjust themselves accordingly using something called the Network Time Protocol, or NTP. Well, that sounds good, doesn't it? Yet, precise as it may seem, we cannot obtain a 100% accurate idea of time, even today. Six, time's up. Time isn't simply a measuring device. Its absence can affect us in profound ways. I spoke earlier about theories concerning the link between human consciousness and time. That's just the tip of the temporal iceberg. We use time to judge distance, to mark the development of our lives. Both our personal and literal journeys couldn't be quantified without time around. 
And it isn't just us who rely on time. You could also argue that the universe relies on it as well. When our reality finally dies, it'll be driven by time and time alone. Five, how long is a second? The human brain can be easily fooled. And one major way this happens is through time. You can perceive it differently through things like speed and even your height. Another trick of the mind happens when you check out the hands of a clock. It's all to do with a mode your sight has called saccades. Essentially, it's when your eyes move faster than your brain. This can lead to an effect where the second hand appears to take longer than a second to tick by. There's nothing to worry about, however. It does, in fact, tick by in one second precisely. You're just moving your eyes too rapidly for your brain to process things. Four, short versus long. Queuing at the market can be one of the most tedious things imaginable. You're probably like me in that you go for the shorter line when you're getting your goods checked out. Psychologically, that makes sense. Shorter line, shorter waiting time. Or is it? You see, no two lines are the same. Different shoppers, different products. You have people who forgot something and the assistant is sent out to grab it. You have others who managed to fit in a million coupons into the little purse and they're gonna be a while trying to bag a discount. It's been established that even if the line is short, the long line can move at the same speed. You wouldn't know because your instinct is to go for short. It's actually the same thing when you're driving. I see it all the time. People keep cutting in and out to get to the, one, the traffic flow that's moving and I end up catching up to them. So, yeah. Three, international fixed calendar. You know, I'm currently planning my vacation. I'll probably go somewhere in June or if that's not possible, eh, don't worry, I'll just, I'll go the following month, you know, Seoul. Hang on, what? Yeah, there is a bonus month called Seoul lying between June and July. You didn't miss it really, it's just you're not consulting the international fixed calendar. It was an English accountant with the incredible name of Moses B. Cotsworth who came up with the idea. With this calendar, which he called the Yearl calendar, you have 13 months, each of which lasts 28 days. He believed his system to be simpler and more practical, though, as you've no doubt guessed, it, uh, it didn't catch on. Well, unless you worked for Kodak. They loved it and used it between 1928 and 1989. Two, weathering time. Earth has played host to some powerful storms across the centuries. But did you know that some winds blow so powerfully they can affect the rotation of the planet? Jet streams reportedly slow us down to the tune of a fraction of a millisecond per day. The good news is they can also speed us up. So if you're having a boring day at the office, fear not. You're about to go home a tiny sliver of time earlier. You're welcome. One, DST and convenience stores. DST is seen as a good thing by many. It's better for the planet because you're using less electricity by putting on the lights. Also, it's welcomed by businesses because more light, better visibility, better visibility, more shopping. In 2022, an American House subcommittee was informed of the positive effect DST had on consumers via a statement from the NACS, the National Association of Convenience Stores. Raise your hand if you knew that was a thing. Cosmic forces equal great convenience. It seems the greatest ally of consumer society is time, just like it helps everything else in this world of ours. So. What time is it when you're watching this? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out our social medias, including my personal ones, links in that description. Now, if you're ready to watch that other part of the trip through the tangled world of temporal matters, then you know what? It is right here. It's called 25 mind-blowing facts about time. Who saw that coming? Just click on the link and I'll see you on another list that I filmed in the past. So it's like time travel. Although by the time you're seeing this one, I filmed this one in the past. <laughs>